Welcome back. Today we're discussing the topic of Polycarp of Smyrna and what was his importance in the early church, as well as his importance now. Polycarp was born in Smyrna in 69 AD. Smyrna is just modern day Turkey. Not much is known about Polycarp's childhood, but we do know that he eventually joined the Christian Church of Smyrna. This church was established early into Christianity, potentially by Paul the Apostle or another of his companions. The church was even mentioned in the book of Revelation by John. Eventually, Polycarp was even instructed to be the bishop of this church by the apostles themselves. The importance of Polycarp and what sets him above most early church fathers is that he was tied to the apostles, and more specifically, the apostle John. For example, Irenaeus of Lyon, who was a disciple of Polycarp, says this about his teacher. Polycarp also was not only instructed by apostles and conversed with many who had seen Christ, but was also, by apostles in Asia, appointed bishop of the church in Smyrna, whom I also saw in my early youth, for he tarried a very long time, and when a very old man gloriously and most nobly suffering martyrdom departed this life, having always taught the things which he had learned from the apostles, and which the church has handed down, and which alone are true. And continuing on, Irenaeus says this about Polycarp's connection to the Apostle John. I can remember also how he, Polycarp, would speak of his familiar relations with John and with the rest of those who had seen the Lord. I remember how he would recall their words to remembrance, whatever things he had heard from them respecting the Lord, both regard to his miracles and his teachings. Polycarp would recount them all in harmony with the scriptures, having in that manner received it from the eyewitnesses of the word of life. The only surviving writings we have of Polycarp is his letter to the Philippians, which was written around the 130s AD. In this letter, Polycarp goes over the principles of being a Christian, and as well encourages the church to help those who've turned away from Christ and the church itself. In this text as well, Polycarp quotes 17 of the 27 books of the New Testament. This shows that the majority of the canon we have today was already in use very early on in the church. We have as well letters from Polycarp's friend Ignatius of Antioch, who, as he was being led to his martyrdom, wrote Polycarp a letter. Later in the life of Polycarp, he traveled to Rome to discuss with the Bishop of Rome, Antecedus, on when Easter should be celebrated. They never were able to agree on the exact date in which it should be celebrated, but they were very close, and surprisingly this did not divide them. In Polycarp's stay at Rome, he as well ran into the heretical preacher named Marcion, whom I have made a whole video about in the description below. Polycarp even called Marcion and his teachings the firstborn of Satan, as Marcion's teachings went against the beliefs of the church. Polycarp came back to Smyrna, and in 155 AD, there was a command that Christians had to offer a sacrifice to the Roman gods or even worship the emperor. And to reject this command, it could result in imprisonment and even death by the Roman Empire, who currently was ruled by Antonius Pius. Many Christians were killed by this command in Smyrna, and many people wanted Polycarp especially dead. After Polycarp's location was revealed, to the Romans, they sent soldiers to bring Polycarp on trial. Many people begged Polycarp to leave, but he chose to stay in the city and face what was to come upon him. As the Roman soldiers came to the room in which Polycarp was sleeping, they were shocked at why the Roman Empire wanted such an old man arrested in this manner. As the Romans brought him to be tried in the city stadium, they questioned him on why he couldn't just call the Roman Caesar Lord and live but he rejected their offer. Polycarp was then brought forward to the Roman proconsul in the stadium. The proconsul demanded that Polycarp should reject Christ and swear by Caesar and he would live. Polycarp said in reply, 86 years I have served him, Christ, and he has done me no wrong. How could I blaspheme my king who saved me? The Roman proconsul then sentenced him to death. They tied him to a stake and then lit the base on fire in which he was standing on until it would slowly consume him. Almost miraculously, he wasn't killed by the fire. The crowd got so angry and so they sent an executioner who stabbed him and he finally died, a martyr. 
Polycarp's usefulness most certainly is his connection to the Apostle John and the other Apostles. By this we can see and read what the Apostles taught through the letter Polycarp wrote. If you would like to study this letter for yourself and the martyrdom of Polycarp, I have linked it in the description below. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of this series of going over the early church fathers. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And as always, God bless.